<laughs> okay, now we're back in a new part. On to the max, <laughs> neglecting or not. Sorry. Yeah, no, from a developer's point of view, Apple's not neglecting OS X. And, um, because we get, to, I get, we get developer updates and they're... So they are going to release a, a 10.7 some point in the next yes. six to yeah, 12 Yeah, we're, we're going to get there. I think, uh, you know, next year, uh, I think we're going to see it probably by WWDC. Um, the, they're actually doing a lot of powerful features under the hood. And that's, that's probably why I started making videos. Is everybody like, like, look, oh, look at HD video. Well, to me, that's like, who cares? I'm more interested in, 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 in uh, interrupt schedules and, and task management and, and how uh, machine code is going to affect my performance. And uh, a lot of what also Microsoft did with Windows 7 and, and Apple's doing with OS 10 is, is under the hood. And no one's getting the crap because it doesn't have fairy dust on it. <laughs> you can go through it all that. And I, I don't like that part of the tech world. You know, I, I guess people need to have something that that they can hold in their hands and quite frankly just could care less about the whole... And on the note you're talking about, I'm kind of glad that Apple embraced that a little bit. I kind of wish Microsoft had done it with Windows 7 because if we're honest, Windows 7 is Vista Service Tech 2 well, with, with some that, other tweaks. That, Windows 7 actually did a lot of stuff from the kernel onto the, onto the, uh, u, onto the user space. Oh, I know. And, <laughs> I mean, I, both... Both systems, I don't consider either one a service pack. Actually, Windows finally got on to the point of what OS X has been doing. OS X is always a slow increment. And Windows, oh, well, we're going to go to this code base, now this code base, and well, this code base. Well, no, I know, but that, that's one of the things, it's like, and now like you say, Windows is doing it too. And that's one of the things I don't like about either platform. And that, uh, and that an incremental increment increase uh, of on the traditional code set like you say it's like because it, uh it, it's yes it's innovation it's improvement but it's not a whole new os no and, and, like, what it be? i mean do you know what the, as a developer oh i hate it well no 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 no, no. A, 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 from a developer standpoint it's great that they're addressing the fact that it's uh, well and this is one of the reasons i love linux especially rolling distros because once you get in there, it just tends to keep working as long as you keep going with. You don't have to start from scratch all over again, usually, which is, is very beneficial from a development standpoint. As a matter of fact, uh, in Windows, that is a real problem a lot of people are having right now and that they have stuff that development stopped on because there's no need for it to continue. That worked perfectly in XP that will never work in Windows 7 and there's no equivalent and they're just screwed. Uh, it's, and, and that's a problem that has never really existed in Linux and it hasn't really existed very much on Mac since OS 10. And I think going forward, hopefully, if you're on the 64-bit thing, it will exist less with Windows. That's a good thing for the end user and the developer. What I yeah. have a problem with is the way they sell it to you. And okay. that they want to rebrand it, a whole new operating system, okay. when it isn't, and sell it to you as one. Yeah, uh, I, I think it that. should be an upgrade price. Yeah, it, it, uh, but hey, but Apple did that. They charged, I think I paid $15 for Snow Leopard. Um, yeah, well, it's for, for Snow Leopard, but uh, it's, uh, when, they, when they officially go to version 10.7, because if they get to 10.7, it'll probably be 129 or something like that. Yeah, it's like, and I and I'm I'm sorry, I, and I realize they want to make money off of this, and they have a right to for all their hard work and stuff they put into it. But I'm just thinking, for the incremental upgrade, it is depending on how. Well, I, I know, but it, it's not like they went over and started from scratch over either. I I, I think it should be. I think these upgrades should be under a hundred bucks, ideally under seventy-five, so that they're just yeah, it's a good chunk out of the end user, but it's not the over a hundred dollar purchase that they want to turn it into. Snow Leopard, like you said, they didn't do that, but I don't see that becoming the trend with Apple. That's not the Apple way, and I never see that becoming the trend with Microsoft. Yeah, I, I, hey, as a consumer, I'd love it to be under ninety-nine dollars, um, but they do really do a lot of work under the hood to actually get legacy support 
or backwards compatibility and bringing in the new features. It, it is a tremendous task to do so, but it's not something that we can visually enjoy uh, with like new features and gadgets, which people, well, I remember going from Tiger uh, to uh, Leopard, that, oh, everybody, oh, look, we have the shelf look and the, the new dock and <laughs> look at all these new things. I, I don't care. You know, that, that's well, you know, and if that's really what you care about, you should switch to Linux because Linux reinvents itself every six months if it wants to. <laughs> if it wants to, <laughs> it doesn't have to. It's I, I don't change mine regularly, but if you want to, you can. <laughs> right. I, 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 I can. As a consumer, I'm not going to argue with you and saying, you know, make it a cheaper price. But I do know when a large part of Windows expense is that. Honest consumers are paying for a tremendous amount of piracy that goes on within Windows. Well, and, and you, I, you, you, that, that's the other thing. Um, uh, the licensing agreements on this stuff needs to change. I can't count the number of times. I mean, I, I work in the IT industry. Like, I do tech support and some web design and other stuff like that. I can't count the number of times in any given year I have to commit software piracy to use something that they leave that my clients legally own, but because of the terms of the licensing agreement or the way that digital rights management was implemented, they have to pirate the software to use their legal copy. And I'm just, you know, this stuff does nothing to stop people from stealing it. The biggest thing they could do to yeah. stop this stealing would be set a fair price. Hey, yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, I agree with that. Because they can spend all these millions of dollars and all this DRM stuff and all this verify this and everything else, and there ain't a version of it that hadn't been hacked yet. It's one of the things I actually beat up on Silverlight for a lot uh, because Silverlight's DRM is from hell, and it makes its cross-compatibility difficult, if not impossible, and they're in the version of the Silverlight DRM that hasn't been cracked within a month of it coming out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm sorry. It's, you're doing nothing to prevent illegal use. You're doing everything to hurt legal, honest users who are not stealing your stuff. It's <laughs> consumers, and that's the problem. I'll give, I'll give a great analogy. The post office is going to increase the, the cost of a stamp yet again. And what do they complain about? Too much email. Well, the brilliant people in the government think by increasing the price of the stamp that somehow that the, they're going to be able to continue and not worry about uh, people using email. Well, the, the more you increase the cost, the more the people, more are, people are going to use email. <laughs> yeah, more. Make it competitive. It, it, it's, it, yeah. Well, it, granted, it costs so much money to ship physical goods. It's um, w one of the things the post office did right was adopt that flat rate shipping and yeah, actually. I agree with that. And, but, and they went, that. because for years the, you could not ship stuff through PayPal with the post office. If you did, you voided all the terms of things. The U.S. government reached out to PayPal and goes, we will make sure you're not regulated if you will work with us here, and yeah, yeah, yeah and so forth. And that, that's one of the things they did smart. <laughs> so now yeah. most things are shipped that way on that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they all, I, I, that not so you know that part I love how they you know their their new flat rate and stuff, but they come out all the time complaining when asked why are you raising it? Well, people are are using the postal service less and less, and email is killing. If we want to be able to to get in and start charging fees per email, I remember that whole uh, snafu with the uh, 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 one. Honestly, the government bureaucracy that goes with the post office. It's mm -hmm. I no no I I can't count. Uh, I was a I, I, I'm a victim of ID theft, so I'm kind of, I, I don't put my identifying information all over the place. I'm real hot with that. I was in a neighborhood once where the post offices were accessible to everyone, and they wanted your full name and everything in the post box to deliver mail yeah. at all. And, sure. you know, that's not, I don't have to do that with UPS and FedEx, and there's a lot of things, UPS, FedEx, and DHL. It's like, they need to realize that they don't have a monopoly. They, they need to go back to having customer service and actually addressing people's concerns and dealing with stuff. The problem is they're federally regulated and they have to deal with the bureaucracy that goes with that and that makes it hard for them to actually compete with anything. <laughs>